Today, I got to sit down with one of the directors of engineering here at Stack Overflow, John Chen. He's a self-taught developer who is now a director of engineering here at Stack Overflow. He started off in the MySpace days and was responsible for one of the most infamous April Fool's Day pranks at the company, as well as being responsible for Stack's public platform. If you want to skip ahead to any point of the video, timestamps are linked below. We're going to cover John's journey as a self-taught developer, the advantages of being a self-taught dev, how to make your resume stand out, and much much more. So here is John to introduce himself and tell his origin story. Hi, my name is John Chan. Uh, I'm the director of engineering for the community products team, which is responsible for uh, the Q&A site that most people know uh, Stack Overflow for. I really started off in sort of the Zynga and the MySpace days when I was trying to make my blog and my sort of like personal profile something that you know, I would really enjoy actually using it that I thought my friends would find um, really enjoyable too. And so that's really where things started off for me, you know, didn't go to a boot camp. This was before those were popular in addition to, um, you know, going to a, a four year degree program for computer science wasn't something that was particularly interesting to me at the time. And so, you know, uh, I went through college actually studying philosophy, for example. And so when um, you know, I got my first job after college, I still wasn't really considering my uh, a, a career in uh, software engineering at the time. Um, and it wasn't until I actually built out a side project, um, which is called Bento, it's actually something that I still work on uh, occasionally here. Um, that's when I actually got discovered by Stack Overflow. Um, I didn't end up applying. Um, the reason uh, that I actually even started uh, this side project was because I had a bunch of people uh, that were really interested in how I became a self taught developer in the first place. So I remember having this conversation with a lot of folks at the time, which were like, what do you learn HTML? What do you learn CSS? What do you learn JavaScript? And I had this huge list of links that were like, here are the best free places that you can probably go learn uh, how to code the way that, you know, I wish I had the resources for. And one day I remember deciding to put that, you know, on a web page, sort of connect how the different technologies work together in it hit the front page, it was number one on Hacker News and it was on the front page of Reddit all on the same day. Um, and then Stack Overflow reached out to me at the time. Um, you know, two weeks later, I suddenly was talking to Joel Skolsky, uh, one of the founders of Stack Overflow. And I've been here ever since, almost nine years after the fact. So, uh, you know, it's been, uh, you know, not a very straightforward journey for me. It's not something I even expected uh, to have happen to me until um, really, uh, you know, Stack Overflow reached out to me at the time. And, you know, I've grown from being an entry level developer, really not even knowing C Sharp and .NET, which is what we use here at Stack, uh, to becoming a principal developer and then eventually uh, into management where I am today. What do you think is the most valuable thing a self taught developer who's currently going through that learning process can do in order to make themselves stand out in the job market? Yeah, when it comes to self-taught developers, you know, I typically think of sort of three major categories of developer that I typically see when people are actually applying. You know, one is the one that probably is the most familiar to people, which is the uh, person who went to a four-year degree program, they studied computer science, they're on algorithms and data structures. You know, that's the path that I think most people are familiar with and probably the most traditional uh, path that we see out there. Uh, second is with bootcamp grads, right? You go into something like a hack reactor or a full stack academy or Flatiron school, and um, you learn sort of like the hands on sort of skills that you would need that you would actually be using on the workplace, right? But maybe you don't get so much of the sort of fundamental data structure and sort of like algorithm academic background that you might expect from a four year degree program. And lastly, when it comes to self taught developers, they really learn, I think, some of the really important uh, sort of motivational and soft skills that you really need or you know, I don't really love calling them soft skills. I like calling them sort of like professional skills because I think they are just as, if not more important than the technical skills that you're going to be picking up. But one of the things that I think that is extremely important for self-taught developers to remember when they're applying um, to these positions is that like they have a lot to offer that even the other two buckets um, of software developer, you know, may not have nearly as much experience and practice with, right? Um, I really believe that software engineering and sort of doing web development overall is really about being able to find the skills to, or, you know, to have the skills to learn almost anything. Like you may not know exactly how to do something, but you're confident that you can actually figure that out, right? And demonstrating that I think is something that self-taught developers in a lot of cases uh, have a leg up on because you didn't have the instruction uh, with either a professor, with a computer science degree, or, um, you know, even with a boot camp where it's more intensive, but you still have a lot of support. Um, around you. And, you know, that's the thing that I look for a lot uh, when I find, uh, especially for entry develop, uh, entry level developers that are coming into the organization, you know, teaching somebody a C sharp, 
.NET, JavaScript. That's something that I can maybe give you a course on, you know, pair program with you on. But having that uh, ability to show that you've been able to learn uh, something on your own, that you've built projects on your own, right, and demonstrate that you have that fluency, that's something that's a lot harder to actually coach. And that's really what it is that I like to see people demonstrate, especially if you're a self-taught developer. So for John, the most important things aren't so much the hard technical skills, but the ability to learn and demonstrate your ability to do so. And I very much agree. That was one of the things that really stood out to me going through. I think it was I was in my second year of computer science and going to a hackathon. And, you know, going through computer science, you're like, yeah, I'm doing computer science. And not even knowing what JSON was when we were building the app because you'd never had to build anything before. And then there were all these self-taught developers who were there just because they were, you know, they wanted to be active and involved in the community. It was one of their ways of networking. And they were the most valuable members of the team by far. I see that a lot of people that are self-taught developers, especially when they're about to enter the job market for the first time, you know, they have a lot of imposter syndrome. They're sort of like, oh, I don't know how, I, I don't know what a red black tree is. And I don't know how to reverse a linked list or... Um, I didn't go to a boot camp and I don't have a certificate or a piece of paper that shows that I know what it is that I'm talking about. But as you're sort of saying, you know, they end up sometimes being the most resourceful people. Because again, I think that, you know, engineering and software development as a whole isn't really about sort of knowing immediately, uh, you know, how to do uh, solve a particular technical problem, right? You know, that's a big reason why Stack Overflow is probably really popular, right? Um, it's really about how you can be, uh, you know, figure out and have the confidence to figure out um, what the particular solution is going to be, even if you may not know that immediately or may not have the original background information. Um, you you have this this sort of, um, you know, uh, curiosity as well as a sort of a growth mindset to really go after what those solutions are, even if you don't have all the tools to begin with. One of the biggest questions we get asked from self-taught developers is how to get that first job. Even as a comp sci graduate myself, getting that first job was insanely difficult. It required a lot of hustling, emails, interviews, late night programming assessments, and so on. So I asked John what his advice to stand out as a self-taught developer would be? We use a set of criteria here at Stack Overflow that, you know, we're pretty transparent about overall. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we sort of look for generally is sort of experience, right? Like, have you had the time to um, either have an internship or have a computer science degree or go through a boot camp? You know, that's something that, you know, self-taught developers in particular may have a little bit more trouble sort of demonstrating, especially if they've done that completely on their own without the help of an institution or haven't had some working experience just yet, right? But Again, that's one of several factors that we take a look into. So even if you may not necessarily have a lot to uh, demonstrate on your application when it comes to that, there are so many other things that you can do to make sure that you can show us that you have the skills and the depth and the teamwork skills to do that. So one of the things that I find a lot of developers uh, sort of uh, gloss over um, is why they actually want to work for Stack Overflow in particular. You know, uh, one of the, we do ask for cover letters, or we have in the past, and we have a pattern of doing that. And I see so many sort of those copy-pasted templates about like, I would like to work for X, and I have these skills, and da-da-da-da-da, right? But um, I want to find folks that are really passionate about the work that we're doing here, especially for something like Stack Overflow, which is something that, you know, uh, I think that most developers use on a day-to-day -day basis and probably have opinions about, you know, are you interested in the kind of work that we're doing in? Do you listen to our podcast? Maybe go and check out some of our videos, see what uh, kind of projects that we're really invested in, right? I want to see that demonstrated overall. And uh, another thing that I think is really important to demonstrate is just your technical depth on there, right? Maybe you do have a side project that you've been working on that you've been able to do a uh, build end to end, you've architected it, you've learned new technologies. Talk about what some of those challenges are and what the impact of that work is going to be, right? That's a really big part of how I came into Stack Overflow is because of a side project and how difficult it was to um, get it to the place that it was at. And then lastly, the other thing that I would love to see is just your ability to work really well with a team, right? Uh, this is something that I think a lot of people overlook, especially if you come from a particularly academic background where, you know, you're given a homework assignment and you get a start on something that is completely fresh without working with other folks. Uh, that's not typically what you see uh, when you actually join uh, an engineering organization. There's a lot of existing code, so you have to understand how to read it, 
work with others to find out the context for that kind of code, and also be able to negotiate expectations with other folks and see how you work and mesh well with those people too. So if you have extracurricular work, volunteer work too, right? And even demonstrated some leadership there. Those are all really great ways of sort of um, demonstrating that you have the skills and the experience without necessarily having uh, that degree or that certificate. Bias is a very tricky beast to work with. It's impossible to eliminate as we're all human, but it's also our responsibility to try and reduce that as much as we can. As John's an engineering manager who interviews candidates, I wanted to hear his take on any bias a self-taught developer might face. We're still making progress uh, when it comes to where the industry is and sort of accepting self-taught developers or other folks from a non-traditional background that are coming outside, uh, coming from an outside of a you know, four-year degree um, program from a university, for example. Example, right. And I think that's largely a relic of, you know, what the actual uh, market was like um, for developers previously. You know, if you take a look back 10, 20, 30 years, the only places you could find developers or people who knew how to code were from those universities. Right. Uh, but that's rapidly changed, especially in the last decade or so, where the uh, sort of advent of coding boot camps, the sort of flood of uh, education that and resources that is out that are out there in terms of like YouTube and Code Academy and all these other places that are out there. And so, you know, we as an industry, I think, need to evolve in terms of understanding, like, how are we going to be able to bring uh, this sort of new generation of developer on where they're not just all coming from a four year degree program anymore? Um, so, you know, I think that every, uh, you know, each company has their own, uh, has their own sort of journey in terms of how to actually bring on those developers, you know, for one, uh, they need to figure out how to properly onboard them and support them because they may have different needs than what you typically sort of see in the industry, which has largely been based again off of that sort of like, oh, we're sourcing from university model. Um, but I think that we're slowly getting closer and closer to having a much more inclusive uh, sort of view on how to bring on engineering talent into our organizations. One aspect of being a self-taught dev or not having the degree to back you up can be imposter syndrome. It's very real. It's something that I experience on a regular basis in at least one facet of my life. And the reality is, is that you're never going to know everything. It's important to have those tasks that you know you can nail every time and don't have to think about. But engineering is essentially being a problem solver. So we'll never have all the answers. We just need to learn to be comfortable with that gray area. Yeah, I really love this question. And, you know, talking about imposter syndrome is something that, uh, you know, I speak on a lot. And, you know, to answer your question directly around sort of like, has it, in, you know, well, one, I suppose, like, does it impact me still? And two, you know, how does that actually impact my engineering management style? I mean, one, yes, it absolutely is still something that happens to me, you know, um, I think that no matter how experienced you are, or how much how long you've been in the industry, you're always going to be learning, or hopefully that's what it is that you're going to be doing, especially in an engineering context, right? And so um, I think that having this awareness that maybe you don't uh, know everything, or sometimes even question that, you know, if you're qualified for the position that you're in right now, you know, I still think sometimes, like, I still pinch myself, or it's sort of like, oh, I'm a self-taught dev, I didn't have this degree, or, you know, I didn't know C Sharp and .NET coming into this company, so how in the world uh, did I get into this position in the first place? I still think about that. Um, and, you know, to, to speak to how this impacts my engineering management style, you know, one of the things that um, I tell a lot of folks that first come onto uh, my team is, um, you know, how I sort of think about this, where it's sort of like, you know, especially for entry level developers, I think a lot of people believe that you need to sort of know everything before you actually get into a role, right? Um, but um, I, what the way that I like to illustrate this is that, uh, you know, this is a lot more like... Um, being dropped into a maze in the dark than it is sort of like following a map uh, on the way out, right? Not everybody sort of knows how to sort of get out of that maze initially. First, you sort of have to feel your way through it and eventually sort of make your way out there. And the people that are more experienced, the more senior developers or the people that are in leadership, right? It's not like they have a magical sort of light or they know how to get out of there. They're just much quicker um, with their steps going through the maze here, right? They've done this before and they're less afraid of running into the walls and all of that. So I think throughout your career, there's always going to be a sense of, you know, maybe I don't know everything that's going to be there. But the perspective that you bring to that sort of like inability to know everything up front is, I think, what uh, is really important to sort of combat imposter syndrome, right? It's not bad that you don't know something. It's... Um, actually, probably a good thing that you're aware of that, but your ability to navigate the unknown and have the confidence and to have these sort of skills and the tool sets and the support uh, from your team, too, I think is really important in order to, you know, 
develop the confidence to run out of that maze in the dark, right? That's what your engineering managers are for. That's what your team is for. That's what, you know, all the support that I think that the developer community provides is really supposed to be geared towards. And do you, for the team members that you do manage who either are self-taught or have a degree, is there anything different that you need to take into consideration when you're kind of guiding the careers of those who are self-taught developers? Is there anything specific around that that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think that, you know, this a difference between the folks that are self-taught versus uh, maybe come from a four-year degree program, I think are much more relevant early on in somebody's career, right? Um, when I was speaking before about sort of like, sort of these three cohorts that I think of when it comes to what kind of developer comes onto an engineering organization, there are differences in, you know, what I tend to see uh, in candidates or, you know, and developers early on in their career in each of those areas, right? We mentioned before that I think that self-taught developers may have a tendency to be a bit more resourceful, a little bit more confident in their ability to sort of just get things done. Maybe they don't have the same academic uh, sort of background as, say, you know, a CS degree program uh, might provide, or even in a boot camp where they know that they might need to train folks uh, to interview for those kinds of things, right? But that's a particular skill that I think that self-taught developers may come in with a bit more prepared with, and we need to sort of need to, um, you know, maybe coach on the other areas uh, there. And the same thing goes for the other two cohorts, right? You know, there are some strengths that they have. Um, there are some things that they don't come into the organization with as much uh, sort of like readiness as other developers may have. But this is also why I'm not just looking for one of those types of developers. I'm looking for a diversity of different kinds of folks to be coming onto my team because they all bounce off of each other. And it's much more helpful, actually, to have um, a much more diverse uh, sort of like set of experiences and backgrounds and um, sort of like paths to becoming a developer um, overall here. And so my job is less um, sort of like, oh, what are those sort of weaknesses that you have and how do we get you to that place that is going to make you the perfect developer, right? Of course, we want to continue getting closer and closer to that. But I'm always thinking about that in the context of the team too, right? Um, so that's the way that I kind of think about uh, what happens when those kinds of folks come in and what the differences are. For anyone who stayed this far, thank you so much. If you have any feedback on this video, this is a new style for us. If you'd like to see more, please let us know in the comments below. You can find John on Twitter here using his handle. Apart from that, best of luck on your journeys and we will catch you in the next one.